Well, here I am at the waterside after um, 27 years. Uh, brought up in Italy in a small village called Oleggio, right on the north, uh, on Lake Maggiore. I'm the director of the Waterside Inn and general manager and been with the Roos since 1983. I joined the Waterside Inn in 1987 and been with, uh, with Mr. Michel for all those years. The Waterside was opened in 1972, so this year we're celebrating our 40th anniversary. Waterside started more like a, like a pub and then now they call it gastropub, but on those years they didn't call them gastropub. From a pub it became a restaurant. When I came here in uh, 87, the restaurant was already formed as a gastronomic restaurant, but we didn't have all the extra that we've got today. Today we've got uh, a small hotel, uh, we've got eight bedrooms and uh, four apartments at the moment, and we've got also a lovely private dining room on, on, the, on the back of the room, River Cottage. We hold in the three Michelin star, which is the highest accolade in our profession, and we've been holding that for since 1985, which is quite a, a unique uh, achievement uh, today, well, 27 years. And hopefully it's going to go on and on and on again, yes. Today I'm going to prepare a dish which actually is not on the menu at the Waterside Inn, but is on request from guests. It's called Le Canard à la Presse. Canard à la Presse is, um, is well known in, in a restaurant in Paris, and the restaurant is called La Tour d'Argent. It's a very classic dish. I don't think you would find any restaurants in this country who will make that special dish the way we do it here, or I do it here. Um, it's a unique dish. It's a unique dish for different reason. Different reason is, first of all, obviously, uh, food is there to be tasted, not just to be looked at it. So the flavors on this dish are just unique because the sauce is based on on the blood, bone marrow, and the fat of the carcass of the duck. But also is very special because of the, of the work involved to prepare this dish in front of the guest. Obviously, we are not allowed to taste in front of the guest, and chefs are allowed to taste on backstage, but in the front of guests, we cannot taste, so it has to be perfect. And I always say, if something is prepared in the restaurant, it has to be as good, if not better, than in the kitchen, otherwise let the chef prepare it, yeah. So now we've got the, the duck here, which has been cooked obviously by uh, the chef, the kitchen, and the important on this uh, preparation is that the duck needs to be very pink. Uh, the reason is if the, the duck is too cooked, then there won't be any, any juices left uh, uh, to, on the bones. So. I remove the legs of the duck and uh, this way, you see the leg just come off. Well, it looks quite easy, but on duck, uh, chicken is easier to take the legs off than on a duck because obviously it's much firmer. And now I carve the breast. Now, important on carving is not to give pressure to the, on the knife. As you can see, the duck now is very pink, very, very pink. It could be maybe a touch too pink. Uh, but this, those breasts will go back now to the kitchen to, kept, to be kept warm. So when they'll come back in the next 10, 15 minutes, they'll be slightly uh, more cooked. Sometimes guests ask me, Diego, why do you carve upwards? Well, there is a reason. For everything, there is always a reason. Duck, uh, sometimes uh, the flesh tend to be a bit firmer, a stringer. So on doing this, I'm cutting against the, the grain, so the actual uh, flesh will become very, very tender. That's why I'm doing it this way. It's very important that whoever helps you has to put uh, the, the meat one on top of each other, otherwise it gets very dry. Now I'm getting to the to the next stage, which is actually, this is a, I'm not saying a difficult stage, but you have to be quite strong because in front of a guest, you cannot show the guest, then you are struggling, uh, cutting through bones. And, and actually it is quite, quite tough, I mean, because it's bones, we're cutting bones here. So 
very often uh, you see waiter trying to struggle. That's no good. I'm using a, a kitchen uh, uh, scissors, a bone scissor, and that will really cut through. The presser canard, the base is made on cast iron. And you'll ask me why cast iron? Because you need a metal that doesn't bend. So cast iron, then cover with uh, silver. Uh, the one that I'm using here is about 25 or 30 micron silver, which is uh, a lot of uh, silver, a lot of silver. It's important once you do that, you can talk to the guest at the same time, because if you don't talk to the guest, the guest thinks, oh, what are they doing? It's just they're doing uh, the butcher job. And this is not really a butcher job, really. Now we've got, obviously, all the bones and the goods in there. I close it and I start to roll down. It's okay, you don't need that. That's it. You're going to hear a very nice sound very soon, which is crashing of the bones. And in the next uh, 30 seconds, you're going to start to see some juice coming out of the little beak. And that is obviously blood, but it's not just blood. It's a mixture of blood, bone marrow, uh, cooking juices, and fat. You see, I need a very, this has to be very heavy because otherwise it just goes everywhere. There should be enough. No. Okay, now I'm going to start the cooking process. Now, the chef kindly has prepared me, give me a little bit of stock, because obviously the sauce needs a little bit of stock. You cannot just make a sauce out of uh, uh, blood, so you need a base. Um, whilst you prepare a dish like that, it's very important always to talk to the guest at the same time, because at the end of the day, uh, it's the guest who is going to enjoy this dish. It's not, it's not the maitre d', it's not the manager. So you can ask the guest how they like it, if they like it spicy, not spicy. Uh, and then obviously uh, you follow what, what the desire is. No onions for once, and this is French cooking, there is no onions or garlic, which is a nice thing. Very often in French cooking, then you would add now chop onion and then psh, start to fresh. But no, we don't put any onions here. What we're going to put uh, is the stock. Again, the important now is the temperature of your sauce. We all know that if sauces get too hot, they split. Uh, and that, once the sauce is split, you cannot get it back at all. Not at all. If it's too hot, it will go all in little pieces. Now, a little bit more stock. And now we add the seasoning. The seasoning, well, you have to, again, salt, you have to be very gentle with salt and again, talk to the guests to say, you like salty or not salty, guests are very, all the, very different. Ground pepper, little bit of ground black pepper, not a lot. And then I'm adding a tiny bit of uh, orange skin, just the skin, not using the white, only the, the orange color because the white, will only add bitterness to the sauce and no flavor. Uh, what really tastes nice in, a, in an orange peel is not the, is not the white, but it's the, the orange color. Now at this point, I'm gonna flame with a little bit of cognac, little bit, but all I want to do is to give the, the flavor to the sauce and not the alcohol. So on flaming, again, you, health and safety, you really have to um, be careful where you are. Curtains, fabrics, uh, extinguishers, little more of this, please. extinguishers and all that. You need to uh, really look around your room for health and safety. Um, now the pan is hot. I don't need to put a lot, so just a little flame will be sufficient because just to give the flavor to the sauce. Mm. 
Now, I would like you to see the color of this sauce now. In the next few minutes, that sauce will become very dark. Why? Because now I'm going to add, little by little, the, the, the juices of the carcass of the duck. So you have to be really, really careful because this is the, the tricky of this dish. If it gets too hot, it will split straight away. A little at a time, very gently, and make sure then the, the sauce doesn't reach the boil stage, otherwise the chef first of all won't be happy, the guests will be very unhappy, and you would have failed. So, you know, and when you are in front of the guest, you cannot do that. Now, you can see the difference of the color of the sauce and also the consistency of the sauce because the actual blood now is sticking in the sauce and gives flavor, but mainly sticking in the sauce and the color is really now a brownish, a light brownish color. Uh, the little orange peel, I leave them in, but obviously when the duck will be served, we won't serve that on the duck. A little bit, not a lot, of uh, uh, Grand Marnier, tiny bit. Very, very little Tabasco. No more. Now the sauce is more or less finished. Little bit of finish, little bit of pepper, tiny bit. Okay, so this, those are little radishes.